Hello. You are watching a five kilobyte production. Hello. This is going to be What's a very up, special viewers? video. What's going on, man? This is your host, the Cassette Master. Uh, and I'm coming to show another video. We're going a little bit old school with our uh, recording equipment here. We got a Sony um, EVO-210 8mm videotape recorder. And uh, it's a great little guy. And um, it records onto these little video cassettes, little 8mm video cassettes. Pretty cool. The VCR. This is the VCR we're using right here. Sony Video 8. This is uh, this is an analog uh, VCR here. Here's the original box to this thing. It's the Apollek model RA11. It's Apollek, the original personalized all transistor tape recorder, made in Japan, and. Um, Back is just like that so pretty cool device um, got this at an estate sale recently um, it's a rim drive tape recorder DC bias all that good stuff four transistors uh, stuff like that um, I already had one of these machines um, a Pollock model RA11 I wanted to clean the head and stuff, but this thing doesn't want to come off easy, and it's annoying, and um, we're having some problems with this machine. I'm going to open it up and see if it's, see if I can get uh, this performing better. This is not the one I recently got. This one I've had for several years, but I will show some of the inside. Um, don't worry, I'm not not again I have the battery door it's just taken off right now so I can hook up a power supply to the machine and I yes I know I can turn this menu function off I'm too lazy to do it um, there we go um let's uh you know I've got power to it let's rewind function right there that's forward and then record like that and it turns red right there this has appeared in the video in the past. Then I have the one I got at the estate sales, uh, Apollo Industries. And it's got red. This one here has got gray, um, where the knobs are. The Apollo Industries has red, a nice color red where the knobs are. Um, on the Apollo Industries, it says a Pollock 4 transistor, you know, a Pollock RA11. And a Pollock in this interesting font on the top of the case. And then on uh, the back it's, of the cover, it's got the instructions. Um, however, the Pollock, the I'm thinking slightly newer a Pollock version here, doesn't say Apollo Industries. And it doesn't say anything there, but it says Apollek. Um, and notice the different uh, fonts um, for Apollek. You'll notice what I suppose is an older style at the top, which looks cooler in my opinion, which went to the machine called Apollo Industries. Model RA11 and an Apollek here on the bottom, which I'm supposing is a newer version. And... Um, Obviously, they're both identical otherwise, and they're interchangeable. Um, it's just very interesting to note these differences. The RA11 here, they're both model RA11. But on this one, with the gray on the front, it does not say Apollo or Apollo Industries anywhere. And notice that stops turning. Heck, it's not drawing current anymore because my lead came off. There we go. Now it's turning. It's drawing about 200 milliamps max. It's more running around 180 milliamps thereabouts. It keeps kind of changing. Um, but the, the, the battery cover is black. 
but the rest of it here is white and the area covering up the motor and head is black and there is a white dot there and when you go to record it turns red however on the what I believe older version which I think is cooler um, you'll see the difference in colors for the Apollo Industries now it's it's a name like Apollo Industries like for something as basic as a cheap rim drive DC bias tape recorder like come on like a name like Apollo Industries sounds pretty dadgum strong in my opinion like if your company's called Apollo Industries it just sounds totally cool but um you'll see it's got black where the other one's white um, although it also has a black battery door just like this one and um, you'll see the head cover area slash motor cover is chrome there's also an additional brake that this one has to do better braking of the reel tables now this one um, it, it worked when I got it right off the bat I hooked up power to it and the thing came spring right to life um, off original parts even the original capacitors the amplifier was working and I was playing these recordings of this child singing back in the 1960s and um, it was great you know to hear this child's voice coming in out um, over all those years like a time capsule but um, I, I tried a recording test on a blank portion of the tape don't worry I didn't record over those old recordings and um, it recorded fine but well I mean it recorded but it sounded distorted especially in bass frequencies when I would use a dynamic microphone it had a specific distortion that I remember this machine had that same distortion and it didn't seem to record quite as well as the original recordings were so I figured it had to do with the amount of bias present the intensity of the bias current was either too weak or it was too strong so I went in to work on the bias to find the bias resistor which I did I have the schematic this video is crap because it's a bunch of glitches and dirty heads on the video machine and I I, I since loaned my cl cleaner cassette and I never gone to pick it up and I, when I did one time he didn't have it with him at the time and I'm too lazy to try to get it but um, four transistor tape recorder model RA11 and on the back of the manual here is a little schematic which you can't read because this is a uh, composite video this isn't HD or any of that because I'm going old school for this one I haven't done that in a while I recently got a bunch of blank uh, uh, video 8 8 millimeter video cassettes at the same estate sale I got the RA11 and um, because of that it's, it's putting me in the mood of using that little VCR sorry my voice caught so on the schematic here you can see um, this resistor right here R12 um, on the schematic on the parts it says either 25 or 35 kilo ohms can be used now normally you don't see that where you can have different value resistors in the schematic um, also just noticing the way it was it was on the route to the head I took that resistor out of the circuit and then I tested record and I was expecting the extreme distortion you get whenever you have no bias and I was amazed by a fairly clean sounding recording now why did that happen just pause it the reason why that happened so right here is R12 this is the bias resistor the switches here are shown in record position here is your record playback head here is your audio output transformer when you're recording take notice that the head is connected to this area here in playback instead it's connected to the input of the audio amplifier but when recording the head is connected to two places 
One is R11, which goes through a capacitor and then to the audio amplifier's output. Obviously, you'll have audio flowing through there because you can send the AC of audio through that capacitor and to the head. But capacitors block DC. And since this is a DC bias tape recorder, you have to have a constant DC voltage on the head, very, very low voltage, of course. So where do you get that from? You have resistor 12 right here, which is connected to your power supply, your battery. Resistor 12, which is the one that can be 25 or 35 kilo ohms, is the one that sends your DC bias through. When I took resistor 12 off, we had a even better recording than when resistor 12 was in place. But with resistor 12 out of the circuit, you have resistor 11 in series with C5, a resistor in series with the capacitor. That capacitor should block out the DC and you should have no bias at all. It turned out what was happening, there was still some voltage at the head, DC voltage. This capacitor was good enough ESR-wise that it passed audio. But, it was leaky in the sense that it allowed a small DC current to flow through the capacitor. It was basically acting as a capacitor in parallel with a resistor. And DC was managing to flow from the amplifier along with the audio through the capacitor and onto the head. So, the DC from the, through the capacitor was sending a voltage to the head and bias through R12 had been sending voltage to the head, making the bias signal stronger than it should have been, causing the recording to be distorted, especially in bass frequencies. When I replaced this capacitor and put R12 back in, the original amount that was intended of bias to go to the head was restored and the audio recordings sounded better. Now don't get me wrong, they're not great. It's not anything like high fidelity but it definitely sounded better. Well, I try to clean the head. I hope that did something to help. What I'm do is I'm going to take this apart a little bit and see if we have any leaky capacitors. Because this one's been sitting around for a while and its amplifier is not as loud as it's supposed to be. So we're going to take the cover off this. C grinder, C grinder. C I hope I didn't scratch that puppy and um, if I did I want to be sad but um yeah I'm dealing with fleas it's not fun um, uh, okay so we got the uh, cover taken off We can take the power off. We don't need the power on right, right now. Okay, here's the uh, internals of this recorder. Um, anyway, it's very basic. Um, keep in mind the other RA11, the Apollo Industries unit, uses a round speaker, if I remember correctly. This one uses a noble speaker. This still has the elderly electrolytics inside of it. Close up of the inside of this Pollock RA11 transistorized reel to reel tape recorder. Uh, earliest date I can find on the RA11 is 1962. Um, although it is, it's, it's curious if it might even uh, date back earlier whenever it first came out. They're everywhere. It's cool to see the old germaniums because some of these are black painted shiny black Matsushita transistors. To note, 
Oh, boy, it's, things are really getting interesting. Um, I didn't realize this until now. Well, I may have realized it before and forgot. These two RA11s are completely different tape recorders. Let's go ahead and take the other, the other one apart. Look at the inside of it. You'll see what I'm talking about. The Apollo Industries Pollock RA11 with an extremely noisy motor after I had to fix the motor. I didn't explain all that, did I? I was, I was going to and then I forgot. I talked about how this worked whenever I first uh, tried it out. Then I talked about the recording and the distortion and all that. Well, when I was doing the getting pre ready to do all those tests with the bias and stuff, um, I was getting impatient with the 1.5 volt rewind which was very slow and it was towards the end of the reel so it was very slow rewinding and I was running it off an external power supply and I thought you know I'll just, I'll just bump, the mo bump the motor voltage a bit to make it rewind a little faster thought you know running it at 3 volt wouldn't hurt because it's common for these a lot of these machines to run the motor at 3 volt for rewind and 1.5 volts for play although this one runs at 1.5 volts for both play and rewind and you might wonder why well it uses two batteries so it doesn't use three volts well it's still 1.5 volts it just has the two batteries in parallel so you can get double the amount of current it means half the amount of current from each battery which means the batteries will last a little bit longer because this was back in the days when I don't think alkaline was commonplace and you had to use carbon zinc or mercury mercury was fantastic and I wish they still made the mercury is the long stable voltage over the life of the battery and lasts an exceptionally long time. Mercury was a superior technology, which unfortunately, because of everyone's all crazy about safety, holy crap, mercury, the world's going to end, that they don't make them anymore. But they were a superior battery technology. But So what common pe people commonly used was just car carbon zinc, which is the same as a heavy duty, which equals crap. Um... Yeah, you'll already see what I'm talking about. You'll already plainly see the inside of each of these Apollo RA11s are in no way the same. It's very interesting because they both bear the same model number, RA11. Let's look at them both side by side. Here you can see um, on top is the white RA11. The small circuit board is right underneath where the speaker's at and this uses a, something really cool. A small oval speaker with an eco magnet. And not only that, and it's a beautiful uh, thing to look at, but also you'll see that its amplifier uses only three transistors. Here's the first stage, second stage, and then one transistor on the output. None of this push-pull rubbish. Just one transistor on the output. That's all you've got. And one transformer. Just the output transformer. There's no transformers on anywhere else inside this except for the one output transformer. That's all you got. Now, let's look at the other. The black Apollo, the Apollo Industries version. You'll notice it uses a circular speaker which doesn't have the iconic Alnico magnet. It has a shielded magnet. Now, I don't know if the magnet inside is Alnico or something else, but it's shielded. Its circuit board is a little bit more going for it, though. This one's amplifier, one, two, three, four, is a four transistor amplifier with two stages and then a push-pull output stage. And notice this one also has an input transformer and an output transformer, which the schematic that was shown was for this one here, which is, of course, the manual came with this one. Um, so that's an interesting thing to note with the difference between these two Apollo RA11 recorders. 
They're both a Pollock RA-11. But, alas, they are not created equal. Interesting to note is that the, on the inside of the Apollo Industries one, there's cardboard to help support. That's right, cardboard. Why I get sidetracked so easily and it boggles my mind. I still didn't fully explain the motor situation. I wanted to put the power supply on the Apollo Industries up a little higher so that the motor would run faster and uh, upon doing so it increases speed up a little bit and oh, motor just kind of sputtered out just kind of stopped and now it's after that when I would turn it manually there's this kind of clicking noise as you turn it and yeah I I ruined it I ruined it I was I was really pissed off at myself I ruined it hard to forgive myself for stuff like that you know so I had to take the motor apart and manage to use some super glue and manage to actually repair the motor and uh, it's working again thank goodness a little bit more noisy but it works it was the little uh, commutator pieces that the brushes go against they were glued on to um, the shaft or a thing on the shaft and all three of them had come off oh, so I had to, I had to, I had to um, glue them back on very carefully, and then solder one of the little coil wires back on because it, one of the little wires, the enamel coated wires, it also had uh, broke off. So here's the circuit board in the white Apollo R11 with its old capacitor here very basic looking board and old capacitors on it. I'm going to just go into an ESR meter and see what, what they're like. This, this, this was one here, you know, probably going to be not so good. Oh, it's all, oh, it's, it's not bad. Okay. That's good to know. About this guy. It's all right. Okay. What about this guy down here? It's okay. Well, that's good. This guy right here. Fuck. Does it go here? There? Yeah, it's good. This one. It's alright. This one. They're alright. This one. The last one wasn't the best. So. It was okay, but not the best. Might, I guess replace that one. Probably heated up by now. This capacitor, 10 microfarad, 10 volt. A new one in. Observe polarity.
going to change anything at all performance wise it'll probably be exactly the same let's see if my prediction is correct yeah it's about the same I didn't think it would change anything that's because it was still emitting some signal on the ESR meter Volume is all the volume is all the way up, it's not very loud. Yeah, I mean it works, but it's just <laughs> oh they're everywhere. <laughs> okay. Dynamic mic now. Probably can't hear it. do a crystal microphone recording and um, hello testing this is a crystal microphone recording testing huge difference in sound quality between the two mics. Um, I thought this thing used to be louder, but I, I but maybe my memory's off. Um, this one isn't very loud. The other one, Apollo Industries, is a lot louder. So let's put these back together. And on this Apollo one here, but it may be my memory actually was wrong. Um, the bass distortion was actually recorder here, which is very, very similar, but it's a two motor machine and it's quite different. Okay, camera audio now. Um, here are the two machines again. Uh, I've got them back together. Um, it's very interesting the differences between these two. This one's a four transistor RA11 and the Apollo Industries while this one is the three transistor RA11 Apollo. Um, of course they're both Apollo. Here is the Apollo Industries with its instructions And here is the um, Pollock that's not called our uh, not called Apollo Industries. It's quite something. Three transistors, of course. recording at a lower recording level on this little recorder which you can record while rewinding mind you on this one and it will erase that way so let's try a lower record level hello there this is dynamic microphone Sony F96 here and I'm using the Sapolic RA11 reel to reel tape recorder. Today's date is the July 24th, 2020. Although it's very quiet, the audio quality is a bit better 
whenever we have a uh, lower um, recording level. Now what we're going to do is we're going to hook this up to an external amplifier so we can have a louder playback. Sorry for the clipping. Today's date is July 24th, 2020. So, this little three transistor recorder really does not perform very well. Um, it is a very sorry, low quality, not great tape recorder. Um, not so great. Now, let's take a look at the Apollo Industries RA11. Um, this one will, uh, let's just see how this one goes, see what the difference is. So far I've just recorded with the crystal. Um, it's in record position here. This one doesn't have the red dot, so you have to use the switch here. But whenever you rewind, notice it won't rewind. This one has an electrical interlock, so that whenever you're in record position, it disables rewind. Also, the amplifier is disabled during rewind, unlike the Apollo RA11 shown earlier, which not only can stay in record position while rewinding and therefore erasing, but also keeps the amplifier on during rewind. Now notice the difference. This is the four transistor Apollo Industries RA11 real-to-real -real tape recorder, recording level in mid position with a crystal mic. Recording level is at maximum with a crystal mic. Testing 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, so forth. Notice that not only does this one sound a bit better, but it is a whole lot louder. First recording you heard was using the original crystal microphone that goes to the Apollo Industries. This is a very common uh, rim drive tape recorders would, would typically come with little crystal microphones. And um, then we switch to using a Sony F96 dynamic microphone. Four transistor Apollo Industry. Now the Apollo Industries unit is being ran with a dynamic microphone in mid position on the recording level. Now the recording level is set up all the way with a dynamic microphone on the Apollo Industries real to real tape recorder. You can hear that it's a lot louder and a much better sound quality, well, a lot louder than the other machine and a lot much better sound quality with the dynamic than with the crystal and a bit more of a, oh no, full tone, I don't want this to keep coming off. Now let's flip the tape over. Time travel to the 1960s, assuming when uh, that these recordings were when this recorder was brand new, it would have been in the 1960s, and listen to what we have.
you're just how noisy the motor is, which unfortunately the motor does not run as well after being fixed as it did originally. There's my computer with Windows Movie Maker. Oh, also I want to make it clear to you that this is a five kilobyte production.